Duchess Sandero sets out to completely change the way you think about budgeting for a compact family five-door car. It's half the cost of many similarly sized models and surprisingly class competitive in many areas given the shockingly affordable prices being asked, especially in this improved form. This car has been shaking up the market and it's easy to see why. Ever thought, as we often do, that almost everything these days seems to cost rather more than it should? Take the purchase of a compact family car, the kind most people want, with room for up to five, a modern engine and a decent sized 300 litre boot. Now today, most of the mainstream makers have decreed that you'll pay from around £14,000 for a thing like that. But one brand disagrees. Dacia. For less than half that kind of asking figure, this Renault-owned Romanian mark can bring you this car, the Sandero. Now, we reviewed this car at launch back in early 2013, but we're doing it again because the brand has significantly updated this model, dealing with its worst failings and building quite a bit of extra equipment. Probably the biggest issue with the original Sandero was its entry-level petrol engine, a thirsty 1.2-litre unit dating back to the last century. A modern, downsized, one-litre power plant takes its place, and that's introduced alongside a range of cabin upgrades that are supposed to make the interior feel a bit less like an Armenian thrift store. Otherwise, uh, apart from a minor exterior upgrade, things are much as before, which means that you still get a model that's nearly as big as a focus-sized family hatch for less than the price of a tiny city car. Little wonder that Dacia remains Europe's fastest growing automotive manufacturer. It was first founded in 1966, but the company only really took off when it was acquired by Renault in 1999 as an ultra affordable brand for developing markets. It was for these countries that its first modern era product, the Logan Saloon, was launched in 2004. Costing a mere 5,000 euros, it sold like hotcakes, encouraging the mark to launch a five-door version four years later. And that was badged the Sandero. By now, the bigger, more sophisticated European countries were surprising Renault management by also clamouring for Dacia's. That's a demand that took so long to satisfy that it wasn't until early 2013 that the brand could be properly launched here. By then, a second-generation Sandero had been launched, a smarter step up from the Spartan original with more modern engine wear and more up-to-date equipment. Uh, the pricing approach, though, was familiar, thousands of pounds lower than similarly-sized competitors, delivering to British buyers a new car for less than the price of many comparable used ones. Looking for the catch? So are we. Let's check this improved model out. First, a bit of a reality check. Now, we could sit here all day making cutting comments about this Sandero's ride and handling package, but you know what? Let's cut to the chase. It is perfectly adequate for the modest needs of its target market. It always was, and it still is. Are the drive dynamics and the suspension up to the most demanding modded standards? No, of course not. They were originally developed more than a decade ago. Anyway, even if that wasn't the case, this Dacia's need to provide staple transport for third world folk would leave it requiring simpler, less sophisticated drive technology than its more fashion-led rivals. This car has to tackle the unsealed roads of undeveloped nations like Morocco and Iran, so there would have been no point in giving it fancy, modern, multi-link mechanicals. Still, the robust suspension setup that's provided is perfectly adequate for ordinary A to B driving. Smaller bumps are dealt with relatively easily, although the basic McPherson strut type arrangement quickly loses its composure when it's confronted with more serious tarmac imperfections. Uh, we had also expected uh, something of a lack of composure through the bends, but body roll is actually reasonably well controlled and you get decent levels of cornering traction too. Unfortunately, the rather lifeless steering makes it rather difficult to feel what the front wheels are doing and there's not much cornering support from these rather squishy seats. Still, the helm is at least light, offering a city-friendly 10.58 metre turning circle and it's in town where you'll be most frequently pressing this eco button, which will limit your engine's pulling power in return for extra frugality. 
Refinement levels, well, they really depend on the engine you choose. Uh, the new engine in the lineup, the base SCE75 one litre petrol unit, is fine if you're only going to be using your Sandero locally, but it suffers from the fact that pulling power is around 10% down on the old 1.2 litre engine. As a result, you really have to stretch it if you're going to get this car going out on the open road, and noise levels then become very noticeable. If you can stretch to the next power plant up in the range, the 0.9 litre TCE90 engine would recommend, uh, then there's less of a problem. This Clio derived lightweight unit shares the SCE variant 3 cylinder configuration, but it incorporates a light pressure turbo and multi point fuel injection, revving freely yet doing so with greater refinement. The TCE model's top speed rises from 98 to 109 miles an hour compared with the base 1 litre derivative, and the rest of 62 miles an hour sprint uh, is 11.1 seconds, which is three seconds quicker. Uh, that's if you can manage to be quick with the slightly bulky five-speed gear change that all Sanderos have to have. Priciest of all is the DCI 90 diesel variant that we're trying here, which is nearly a second tardier than the TCE model to 62, and with a maximum speed of 107 miles an hour, slightly slower flat out. Still, the diesel feels faster, thanks to nearly 50% more torque that delivers significantly more pulling power. Uh, the DCI tends to be the preferred choice of customers wanting the SUV-style stepway model, and that's a variant that gives you 40 millimeters of extra ride height, but but no other tools for off-piste use. Uh, so cresting a few curbs will be well within its remit, uh, but you'd better forget the Serengeti. <music> to understand the styling of this car, you also have to understand the way that it's being sold. In most cases in the UK, Dacia models will sit in the corner of Renault showrooms. It's important then that designs from this Romanian brand are seen as a fundamentally different proposition from their pricier Renault counterparts. So uh, you'll seek in vain for the kind of swoopy avant-garde panel work that characterises, say, the French brand's fourth generation Clio Supermini. Instead, there are bluff tough, functional aesthetics that are supposed to suggest Volkswagen Polo, but don't quite manage it. Um, it's a clean and smart enough look, though, and one that doesn't automatically classify you as a budget brand buyer. Especially in this revised guise, where various small but significant aesthetic tweaks are giving this car a bit more identity. Uh, the recent change is most evident here at the front, where new double optic headlights borrowed from the brand's Duster SUV incorporate LED daytime running lights, uh, feature a pattern of four stacked rectangles. Uh, these flank a restyled grille featuring a honeycomb design and chromed bars flowing out from the central badge. Lower down, there's a sharper, more chiselled bumper. Move in profile, and you get a better perspective for the size of this Dacia. Now, to help you with that, uh, we've got here the typical city car model that many reviewers price picture Sandero against, Ford's KA Plus, a hatchback that's a full 129 millimetres shorter in length. A more comparable Ford Fiesta Supra is shorter too, by 18 millimetres. In fact, a Sandero is only 200 mil shorter than a full-sized family hatchback segment model like Volkswagen's Golf. As for the styling, well, it's chunky, boxy and quite generic, although at least that approach has prevented the look of this car from dating too much. Perhaps the most interesting uh, touch is this C-pillar character line, which flows out from the rear light cluster before dropping down ahead of the back door handle. At the rear, there are restyled lamp clusters with a more distinctive lighting signature that's now based on four illuminated squares. Uh, again, the bumper's been revised too. Of course, as usual, what's more important is the stuff that you can't see. Uh, much has been made of the fact that elements of this Sandero's floor plan date all the way back to the second generation Clio of 1998. Although, to be fair, huge elements of it have been updated since then to create what Group Renault currently calls its B0 plan. Platform. Let's take a seat at the wheel, an area of the car which saw uh, buyers of the original model having to manage their expectations to a considerable degree. 
Now, here, of course, lies a problem for Dacia's Renault management. Uh, make the Sandero's interior look too cheap, and potential buyers will begin to think that a used car might be a better bet. Smarten it up too much, and many who might otherwise have stumped up the extra cash for that nicer-looking Renault model on the other side of the showroom will be needlessly lost to this budget brand. It's an awkward conundrum that the Dacia designers have attempted to solve here by keeping the old functional cabin, but on the mid- and high-spec models, sprucing it up with a few extra touches of satin effect chrome and piano black trim. To be frank, we would have preferred it if the facelift budget had prioritised a more pressing matter, that of driver comfort. Over long distances, these seats still fall short when it comes to ultimate support for your back and thighs. And it isn't acceptable in this day and age for a modern family car to be lacking reach adjustment for the steering wheel. And that is an oversight that we'd be more inclined to forgive if Dacia didn't compound it by restricting height adjustment for the wheel, as well as height adjustment for the seat and for the seat belt to top spec laureate models. I mean, you can just about understand stuff like that being stripped out of the the price leading access derivative, but to delete it on this mid range ambiance variant, uh, the one that almost everyone buys, seems very mean. Especially when you learn that uh, the height adjustment pack that will add those features back in costs just £50. Otherwise, there's not much we'd be inclined to complain about, uh, given the affordable pricing. Uh, Dacia has responded to customer feedback by reciting the electric window switches from the centre stack to a more familiar position on the doors. Uh, there's also now a 12-volt socket, and the quality of the upholstery fabrics, uh, here we've got black serite cloth, has been much improved. This four-spoke steering wheel is new too, although Dacia still declines to wrap it in leather, even in top-spec laureate trim, which is unfortunate because the plastic it's fashioned from feels notably cheap. A nicer soft-touch wheel is optional. Through the rim, uh, the instrument binnacle is made up of three circular segments and now feature satin chrome surrounds, with the right-hand rondel the home for an orange-shaded Clio-sourced information readout. In a laureate model, you get a seven-function onboard trip computer here, with more information on top spec variants provided by a standard media nav center dash color 7 inch touchscreen that incorporates navigation, traffic messaging, and voice control. And cost cutting, well, some of it matters, like the flimsy feel of the interior door handles, and some of it doesn't, like the way that to cut production costs at the Romanian factory, the Sandero side glazing is identical to that of Dacia's other Logan MCV and Duster models. Uh, as you'd expect, there's plenty of hard grey plastic, but the workers at this car's Moroccan factory in Tangier seem to have screwed everything together well, and it does, of course, feel built to last. <laughs> I say, of course, because... <laughs> It would have to be stoutly fabricated to survive the rigours of life in the many third world countries where this car is sold, sometimes with Renault badge work. What else? Uh, well, the boxy shape makes all-round visibility much better than it is on other more slinkily styled Super Mini models, uh, particularly when it comes to over-the-shoulder vision. As for cabin storage, well, uh, there's a useful cubby in front of the gear lever incorporating uh, a couple of cup holders. There's a small tray beneath the handbrake and another one on top of the dash. Uh, the glove box is big, but the door pockets are rather small and they don't incorporate bottle holders. Aux in, USB and Bluetooth connectivity is standard, providing you avoid entry-level trim. Time to take a seat in the rear. Now, just by looking at this thing, it's clear that rear seat accommodation in the Sandero is going to be a considerable improvement on the relatively claustrophobic quarters that are served up by most modern super minis. Get inside, and that promise is largely realised. It has to be said, though, that modern standards of space-efficient design deliver almost as much room in a much smaller roadway footprint. Uh, a five-door Volkswagen Up, for example, is around half a metre shorter in overall length, but it offers virtually as much space to rear-seated folk. Still, there's no getting away from the fact that if you are looking for a Super Mini that'll be regularly pressed into service to carry a couple of rearward-seated adults, then the Sandero does need to be the top of your list of ideal candidates. As usual, though, on a compact car, expecting to take three adults on any sort of length journey back here is a bit ambitious.
Storage here in the back is at a bit of a premium. Uh, there are no seat back mat pockets and the door pockets are very small. On the plus side though, there is a notably low centre transmission tunnel and all models feature Isofix child seat fastening points on both outer seats. Plus there's a centre cup holder and a 12 volt socket. Finally, let's take a look at the boot. Uh, it's annoying that there's no handle to open the hatch. Still, at least once you raise it, the opening is nice and wide, so it's easy to load in bulky items, providing you can negotiate this rather high loading lip. Uh, there are no really clever touches like an adjustable height boot floor, but you do get a couple of bag hooks. Uh, in terms of total capacity, there's 320 litres on offer here. Uh, so compare that to the 292 litres of a Fiesta and the 300 litres of a Clio. Pushing forward the 6040 split folding rear bench that's fitted to all models increases that to 1200 litres as compared to 1093 litres in a Fiesta and 1146 litres in a Clio. So you get the idea, it's a decent size and massively bigger than the kind of 200 to 250 litre boot that you typically get in the kind of city car that will be priced more closely to Sandero levels. If you need more space, you might want to know that all the same mechanicals used by the Sandero are on offer in the company's similarly priced Logan MCV estate car. The Sandero buying proposition remains pretty straightforward. Uh, three main engines, three main trim levels and a single five door body shape. And that's about the same size as a Fiesta size Super Mini and only a little smaller than a Focus size family hatch. The body comes in two guises, uh, the standard one that we're looking at here and in Sandero stepway form where you get a raised ride height and various SUV styling cues. In case you didn't know, Dacia models can be bought in two ways. Uh, so you can either go the traditional route and get your Sandero from one of the showrooms that the brand has set up at Renault dealerships around the UK, or you can bypass all that and get your car online from the Dacia store at www.dacia.co.uk. Whatever your preferred route to purchase, it's likely to be the lower sticker price that's primarily driven your interest, in which case you'll find that the figures being asked are now even more eye-catching than they were when this car was first launched back in 2013. And that's because they've hardly risen. And that's in stark contrast to the figures now attached to contenders in the rest of the Super Mini segment. So, the Sandero remains the UK's most affordable car in its entry-level access form, where the amount required for ownership is just £6,000. Yes, you heard that right, way less than most tiny city cars will cost you. Previously, though, we always thought that figure to be a touch misleading. Understandably, to reach such a super low asking price, Dacia had to take out almost every item of convenience equipment that a customer could reasonably expect to find on a modern family car. Uh, access trim didn't even get you a radio. Plus, you were stuck with the old tech 1.2 litre petrol engine that most buyers didn't want. So, in essence, this was a Ryanair-style price-leading marketing exercise there to get customers into the showroom where they would subsequently end up buying a better trimmed and more expensive variant. Uh, with a decent modern engine and air conditioning, uh, a more realistic Sandero asking price was actually closer to £10,000. I mean, still good value, but not quite the staggering price proposition that the ads promised. As part of this model update though, Dacia has had a rethink and it's made quite a lot of difference. For most buyers, the real starting point for the Sandero lineup lies with mid-range ambiance trim. Well, go for that and you can now have yourself a version of this car with a properly efficient one litre engine and a chilled air conditioned cabin for just £7,000. And you won't have to wind up your own front windows, uh, you can Bluetooth sync your phone and you'll be listening to a DAB radio. Now that is real world value that we can identify identify with. A high proportion of Sandero buyers, though, want more. And with ambiance or top laureate trim, you can get it. These variants offering a three-way engine choice. Uh, so in each case, if you use the base SCE 75 one-litre normally aspirated petrol engine as a starting point, uh, £1,000 more gets you a similarly sized petrol power plant equipped with a turbocharger in the form of the Pokia TCE 90 unit that you're really going to need if you're likely to be doing more than nipping to the shops and back in this car. Now, if you 
are considering that TCE engine, then you're probably also going to want to factor in the possibility of spending a further £1,600 on the 1.5 litre DCI diesel unit that we're trying here. Although, by that point, you'll be back up towards the kind of £10,000 budget that we were talking about earlier. I mentioned the SUV-style stepway variant earlier. That model's based around either TCE petrol or DCI diesel power. It offers a choice of ambiance or laureate trim levels, and it commands a £1,000 price premium over equivalent versions of the standard model. Uh, so that sees it selling in the nine to £12,000 bracket. Which brings us to the point where we have to try and put this Sandero's pricing into some kind of market perspective. Now, I mentioned that the £6,000 sticker price of the base access version makes that variant the UK's cheapest car. Uh, the closest anyone else can get to that is the entry-level version of Suzuki's Celerio, which costs around £1,500 more. Other than that, even the budget brands won't sell you anything for much less than around £8,500 to £9,000. We have already said, though, that most people's starting point for Sandero ownership lies with mid-range ambiance trim, which is what we got here. So why don't we use that as a more relevant basis for price comparison? When you start to look at how other reviewers have been doing that, you tend to find that the low asking figures attached to this Sandero see most of them price comparing this stature against little city cars, most commonly models like Skoda Citigo, Vauxhall's Viva and Ford's KA+. Now, we're not really sure how relevant in comparison that is, given that this Dacia is a larger Fiesta segment, super mini-sized model, which can't be expected to provide city car style efficiency figures, but which obviously gives you a lot more interior space and a much larger boot. Nevertheless, if we take as a benchmark the volume Sandero TCE90 ambiance variant, which costs around £8,000, uh, you're looking at Dacia ownership delivering savings of between two to two and a half thousand over comparable air-conditioned Citigo, Viva or KA Plus models. Now that difference would be much greater though if you specified any of those urban runabouts with an engine that was able to match the performance of the Sandero's TCE 90 turbo unit. And it might also be worth mentioning that if you happen to want diesel power there isn't any city car that can provide it. Switch your attention to more relevant comparisons against similarly sized super minis as we would do and this Sandero's buying proposition really starts to look very strong indeed. So why don't we start with the Renault Clio range that shares much of the same engineering and exactly the same engines. It's not unrealistic to think in terms of this Dacia saving you around £6,000 over one of those. Or, to put it another way, uh, you could potentially buy two Sanderos, one for you and one for your partner, for much the same price as a Clio with less interior space and exactly the same engine. That kind of puts things into perspective, doesn't it? It's not as if the Clio is vastly overpriced by Super Mini standards either. Uh, most of the other market-leading Super Mini contenders are similarly priced, by which we mean that uh, a typical Corsa or Fiesta style model that's comparable in power and specification to that Sandero TCE ambiance petrol benchmark variant we were talking about uh, will typically cost somewhere in the £13,500 to £15,000 bracket, while stripped out, more feebly powered, non-air-conditioned entry level super mini models uh, tend to start from around £11,000. Either way, it's easy to see why Dacia buyers think this car represents such a better bet. Arguably, a more relevant comparison would be against a late, low mileage used car, but even there, this Sandero comes out favourably, thanks to cheap servicing, a strong warranty and a good reliability record. Now, if you find all that convincing, then you're going to need to know how the equipment specification of this model stacks up. So, let's deal with that. So far, we have tried to manage your expectations with regard to the kit tally of the entry-level access model, uh, which has the distinction of being the only car on sale in the UK that doesn't include a radio and which makes you wind up your own front windows. Oh, and did I mention that you can only get it in white? So let's move quickly on to this particular model's mid-range ambiance trim, and that's the one that the vast majority of Sandero buyers will choose. And now, I've already mentioned the fact that air conditioning, a DAB radio, and Bluetooth phone connectivity are now standard at this level in the range. Uh, you also get remote audio controls, USB and aux in points, body-coloured bumpers, and all the penny-pinching emissions deleted from the base version. So things like uh, remote central locking, a boot light, electric front windows, rear headdress, 
headrests and a front passenger vanity mirror. Plus, uh, the cabin trim upgrades that are made to this revised Sandero model, those don't apply to the entry-level variant. If you want to go further, the top Laureate trimmed variants beckon. Now here, the key inclusion is the 7-inch Media Nav Centre Dash infotainment touchscreen uh, that packages in Sat Nav with traffic messaging and smartphone voice recognition. There is no Apple CarPlay or Android Auto phone mirroring functionality, though. Uh, other Laureate level features include front fog lights, uh, rear parking sensors and heated power adjustable body coloured mirrors. You have to stretch to this level if you want standard height adjustment for the driver's seat, the front seat belts and the steering wheel. While other interior additions include a trip computer, cruise control with a speed limiter, a leather gear knob, uh, a bit of extra chrome trim around the cabin and a couple of extra speakers for the stereo. And that's all at a price that is still well below that that's demanded for many base spec city cars. Options are few, although rather surprisingly on such a budget-minded car, you can specify leather upholstery if you've chosen Laureate trim. Apparently a lot of Dacia customers do. Um, if you're buying a mid-spec ambiance model like this one, we'd say that a must-have option is the height adjustment pack, which gives you the seat steering wheel and seat belt height adjustment, without which it's actually quite difficult to get comfortable in this car. For only £50 more, you'd be foolish to do without that. Other key options that we certainly want include a spare wheel and an alarm, plus you might want to add metallic paint. Um, on a Laureate variant, you can add niceties like 15 or 16 inch alloy wheels, a front seat armrest, a reversing camera and a comfort pack that includes rear electric windows and a soft feel steering wheel. As for safety, well, Dacia isn't a top performer in this respect, but all models do get twin front and side airbags, Isofix charge seat fastenings, ESC stability control, and the usual electronic assistance for traction and braking. Uh, there's also a tyre pressure warning light and hill start assist to stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions. As we've said elsewhere in this review, the big news with this revised Sandero is its fresh entry-level three-cylinder, one-litre SCE75 engine. It doesn't feature a turbo, but then one-litre units at this Dacia's price point are almost always normally aspirated. Uh, what is important is that it replaces the previous outdated four-cylinder 1.2-litre 75 bhp power plant, which really was getting past its sell-by date. I mean, it simply wasn't acceptable for Dacia to continue continue selling a super mini model that couldn't crack the 50 mpg barrier on the combined cycle and which chugged out 135 grams per kilometre of CO2. Rather interestingly though, Renault still continues to offer that old engine in its Clio at a price that makes that super mini nearly twice as expensive as the larger, more efficient, refettled Sandero. We'd hoped for quite a lot from the new SCE75 unit, not only because it uses modern technology, but also because it's a substantial 20 kilos lighter than the previous power plant, and that's thanks in part to an all aluminium block. As it is, the gains made are relatively modest. Uh, the efficiency stats improving to 54.3 mpg on the combined cycle and 117 grams per kilometre of CO2. Dacia could have got a lot closer to the prevailing Super Mini class standard if it had equipped this unit with an engine stop and start system, something that's limited to the Pokia 0.9 litre TCE 90 turbo petrol power plant that we would suggest you a stretch to if funds permit. That's why a TCE-powered Sandero can manage better returns, uh, 57.6 mpg and 109 grams per kilometre. If you want to do even better than that, then you'll need the engine we're using here, the 90 bhp DCI 90 diesel, the UK's most affordable diesel car. Now this manages an impressive 80.7 mpg on the combined cycle and 90 grams per kilometre of CO2. That means that the 50 litre fuel tank could take you over 850 miles, which is more than 200 miles further up the road than any of the petrol Sanderos might deliver. Uh, in order to maximise frugality, there's the option for Sandero TCE and DCI buyers of pushing this dash mounted eco button, which restricts the engine's pulling power and tweaks the air conditioning to improve efficiency by as much as 10%.
Of course, calculating the cost of ownership is not all about purchase prices and fuel efficiency stats. Uh, take depreciation, for instance. Now, since the Dacia doesn't cost much in the first place, you're never going to lose much. If we take, as an example, the diesel variant that we've been trying here, after a typical three-year, 30,000-mile ownership period, uh, it will still be worth 46% of its original value. That's according to independent experts' cap. Um, to give you some perspective on that, uh, a comparable Ford Fiesta would be worth 42%, a Renault Clio 36%, a Skoda Fabia 33%, and a Vauxhall Corsa just 31%. In other words, you're talking about residual value showings that, uh, well, they're as good as some premium brand models. And then there's peace of mind. Reliability surveys Europe-wide have suggested that the build quality and the reliability of this car is every bit as good as the Romanians promise. To survive in markets like those in North Africa and South America, of course, this car was always going to have to be very stoutly built. On to the warranty. Dacia offers an industry standard three-year, 60,000-mile guarantee from the showroom, backed up by three years or 60,000 miles of roadside assistance. For a further £400, you can extend that cover by two years, or for just over twice as much, you can up the period covered to a Kia equaling seven years and 100,000 miles. Service intervals are there every year or every 12,000 miles, and since most Renault dealers look after Dacia's too, then you shouldn't be too far away from a specialist workshop. It also helps that there's a timing chain that lasts as long as the engine. Uh, Dacia offers the choice of prepaid servicing schemes covering you for either two years and 24,000 miles or three years and 36,000 miles. That only leaves insurance groupings. Um, all the way through this review, uh, we've suggested that you should upgrade from the SCE 75 one litre engine to the TCE 90 unit if funds permit. Well, the caveat to that comes in terms of insurance. Uh, whereas the base SCE unit is rated at group 3E or 4E, the TCE is rated up at group 9E, which could make uh, quite a lot of difference to young drivers. Uh, this DCI 90 diesel variant is rated at group 10E. Until a few years ago in the motor industry, we all thought we knew what a value brand was. Then Dacia came along and changed the concept forever, to the point where even the Chinese struggled to compete. It is true that earlier models from the brand offered the uh, automotive equivalent of shopping at Lidl, but today, if cost, circumstance or sheer good sense force you into this corner of the market, well, you're likely to find models like the Sandero surprisingly acceptable. If for you a car is simply a functional implement, a domestic tool that, like any other, has to justify its expenditure, then this one fits the bill perfectly. Solid, spacious and family-friendly for the kind of money that you pay for a tiny city scoot, it offers pretty much everything you need and nothing you don't. There is extra equipment if you really want it, and even a bit of modern tech in the form of the TCE petrol engine and the flagship variant's Medianav touchscreen. All of this was true of this car in its original form. That earlier model, though, just needed a few rough edges smoothing off. Back in 2013, we asked Dacia to do something about the crude entry-level 1.2-litre engine, spruce up the cabin a bit, and make air conditioning available further down the range. And with all this done, a pricing that stayed much the same, this Sandero makes even more sense than before, which is just as well because the basic design is now getting very old indeed. Despite that, this is still a model that an awful lot of people in both the new and the used car markets probably ought to be buying. Yes, products from the established market players are still more sophisticated, but the gap isn't huge. Except, of course, when it comes to what you have to pay.